the Barracuda, but the Republicans who do not like her turn out to have been piranha. Well, they second day have not very carefully placed leaks. They have picked her bones clean. The visceral joy that America did not elect a vice president who didn't know Africa was a continent, not a country, balanced somewhat by the question, why did the GOP hierarchy move so quickly to bury her? And she doesn't even get to keep the clothes. The LA Times quoting a McCain staffer who says an RNC lawyer is headed to Alaska to repo whatever she might still have of that six-figure wardrobe. This nugget on the high heels of yesterday's word that the governor had at underlings use their personal plastic for some of those purchases. Another McCain staffer leak a deliciously layered account given to Carl Cameron of Fox News, seen here with the governor. A, Palin was apparently baffled by the notion of South Africa as a sovereign state within the continent of Africa. B, she did not know which countries had signed NAFTA. Those would be those three toughies, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. And C, she refused to take the time to prep for the Katie Couric interview, even though the campaign had done a strong job of guessing Couric's questions. That's kind of a, a, a small, um, evidently bitter type of person who would anonymously charge something foolish like that that I uh, perhaps didn't know uh, an answer to a question. So until I know who, who is talking about it, I won't have a comment on false allegations. Oh, it's more than one of them. On goes the cascade. Both sides blame each other for the call from French President Sarkozy that was actually from two guys at a radio station in Montreal. A McCain advisor now accusing Governor Palin of keeping the call a secret, a charge her people deny, insisting it was on her schedule for three days. It wasn't their fault if nobody from the McCain side of things noticed. New to the table tonight, did Palin bring down McCain advisor Randy Schooneman, accused of being the source for the story that Nicole Wallace had botched the Sarah Palin rollout, thus somehow siding himself with Palin. Schooneman reportedly fired last Friday by the McCain campaign, but McCain spokesman Michael Goldfarb says it's not true. They didn't fire him. They just took away his Blackberry and his email because they were mad at him. Let's bring in Chris Hayes, the Washington editor of The Nation. Uh, Chris, if you can stop laughing long enough, uh, good evening. Good evening, Keith. All right, so we laugh like hell, ha, 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 ha. But how did, on earth did John McCain let this dim bulb get that close to the White House? Well, look, I mean, I, I think that we should take all of this with a grain of salt. I mean, in, in the case of the, the, the NAFTA Africa story, I mean, let's remember that's coming from McCain staffers to a Fox News reporter, which is kind of a zero times zero credibility effect. So I don't, I don't know, you know, if, if what they're saying is accurate and there's no way to really back it up. But whether it's accurate, if it's accurate, it reflects incredibly poorly on the McCain people because, of course, they're the ones that not only chose her, but then went out and lied to the American people every day by their own admission, saying that she was ready to be step in and be president if necessary. And if it's not true, then they're really saying some pretty vile and slanderous stuff against a woman who putatively, they, you know, was, was on their team for the last uh, nine weeks. Uh, the other point here, and, and you made the, the, that connection there, all these stories come from Republicans about a Republican. It can't simply be revenge on the part of the McCain camp. Can it be limited to that? You know, I'm having a hard time parceling it out because, frankly, there's no logic here. I mean, someone, the people who are giving these blind quotes have to understand at some basic level this reflects poorly on everyone. I mean, no one is winning out of what is ensuing here, and it's getting so nasty between the two camps that I'm beginning to think there actually is just actual real hatred mm -hmm. and animus between the two camps that, that, that was, you know, that created during the pressure cooker of the campaign that they're kind of giving into right now, even though everyone comes out looking small and petty and like pathological liars. But obviously the McCain, uh, McCain is not going to run for president again, and the people right. immediately around him are unlikely to find themselves, or very few of them are finally likely to find themselves back in a presidential race. Could this be... Uh, about fear in the Republican structure and the hierarchy. I mean, their constituency is clearly people who believe the party is evangelical, they believe it's populist, right. they believe it's the party of plumbers, of hockey moms, right. but God forbid that it ever was run by evangelicals or plumbers or hockey moms. And could, is, is Sarah Palin being sort of, I don't mean to defend her, but is she being no. destroyed because she didn't understand she wasn't supposed to be one of those people, she was just supposed to use those people? You know, I think that really gets at something really amazing about this entire chapter in Republican Party history. The quote that stuck out to me was the blind quote calling her a Wasilla hillbilly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, here you have the Republican Party and they trot out Sarah Palin to do this whole kind of backlash populist, you know, working class reactionary shtick. This sort of, you know, 
populist minstrelsy almost. And behind her back, they're calling her a hillbilly. I mean, I really hope that every, you know, working class conservative in the country reads that quote. Because the fact of the matter is, every four years, the Republican Party dons the kind of mantle of Joe the plumber. And then as soon as the election's over, they go and kick the guy in the face. And, you know, we're seeing that here. It, 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 it's really kind of remarkable. And as flat-footed as she seemed in response here in the last two days, and she's just been she's been underwater. But yeah. is is Palin's part of the party? Uh, if she's taking it, Senator lying down, are they not? No, they're not taking it lying down. In fact, today there was a, there was a, a blog post on the on the blog redstate.org, which inaugurated a new thing they're calling Operation Leper, which is to ferret out the people you know trying to take down uh, Sarah Palin, the people giving blind quotes, the pundits, and so forth, and the op-ed columnists who've written uh, disparagingly of her, and to make sure that they're they're made into lepers within the conservative movement, that candidates that they uh, get behind or work for um, become you know persona non grata uh, within the establishment. So so there's already a really intense polarizing effect around Sarah Palin. The irony is that she was a polarizing figure in the general election, and now she's become a polarizing figure within within her own party. Yeah, there are the lepers who didn't support her, and of course the other lepers who right. did support her. Right, right. Chris Haynes of The Nation, uh, this may be an endless source of amusement and entertainment for us, so we'll talk to you again. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. Carl Rowe, who led the charge to brand Obama a socialist, now says it didn't work because Obama is really kind of a conservative. Okay, sure, Carl. Worst persons ahead, and when Barney's attack. Just when you thought this administration was all bark and no bite. But first, because they're not going away soon enough, the headlines breaking in the administration's 50 running non-Barney scandals. Mm -hmm. Number three, I could write a book, Gate. Rumors murmuring at the White House, having seen the success of his predecessor's tome, Mr. Bush wants to write his autobiography. Bill Clinton's publishers, Knopf, quoted as saying, given how the public feels about him right now, I think patience would be probably something that I would encourage. Curtis Sittenfeld, who's already written a novel about Laura Bush, says she should write a biography, and quickly, personally, Sittenfeld adds, I would find a memoir by President Bush resistible. Number two, international diplomacy, Kate. President Medvedev of Russia not even waiting till the ink was dry on the Obama election to warn that if this country continued 